Hey guys, how's it going? Um, today I'm going to show you how to fix the garnish on uh, Generation 5 Forerunner. Um, my wife had a little bit of a boo-boo and uh, drove the car into the garage with uh, the tailgate still up. So it kind of, uh, as you can see, smashed the back here. Um, smashed the plastic piece off and, and you know a little bit of paint damage, but who cares about that? It's a Forerunner, right? Uh, basically, uh, I'm doing this video to show you how to fix it as well as um, just kind of test out this camera I got, see if it'll be a, um, a decent uh, fix, better than the, than the GoPro. I don't know, it seems to be okay, but I just wanted to test it out. So anyway, here we go. I'm gonna show you what we need to uh, get started. So in addition to uh, the original part, definitely gonna wanna get yourself a uh, set of trim removal tools because um, we have to start from here I'll show you you have to start by removing this panel here and uh, the way you do that is with these trim removal tools so <clears throat> let me show you that one sec now as you can see there's a little hole right here let me jam this in and pry it up you have to use a little bit of force here So yeah, start each side, and then work your way through here, and do this part last. Right there. Clip right here somewhere. So what you want to do is move this this way. Okay, well this is why I'm making this video. It's because in order to get this thing off, you have to pry this tiny little piece here. Get that piece off. And then there's a 10, 10 millimeter bolt you gotta remove. Right. And that basically bolts right in. Let's see, just like that. Oh, there we go. Bolts right in. So keep this handy. Two. There you go. All done. Next step is removing the vapor barrier very carefully. Okay, here we go. Anyway, that's enough room for it for now. So, it's these four screws here. You want to use a extension on your uh, ratchet. You'll see and you can't miss them when you're up in there. And there's one through this hole here. Oops. There's one more. Over here you have to remove this rubber grommet. See that? Just pull it out. And use your hand to feel it. Now, as you can see, it's kind of loose. There's some plastic clips back here, but they've already been broken off. And uh, yeah, so there's a couple of things you need to unplug here. Totally got busted off. I need to, I need to replace it, unfortunately. Same thing on this side, the other screw. Two more screws in here, but they're attached to the piece itself. So anyway, here's the part. Um, as you can see, I need to install the lights, the tailgate lift thing, 
and pretty much everything else. So I gotta take all this crap out. I'll show you how to do that in a sec. So yeah, you gotta take everything out. Um, unplug the lock. These lights here, they just screw out with a screwdriver. Piece of cake. Take those out too. Okay, so you take a look at that mess here. Basically unscrew the lights, take them out. Uh, unscrew the handle brackets. And then there's two clips on the inside here that holds this bracket that holds the, um, the handle, the release handle. Uh, you don't have to remove this little thing, I don't think. You can just kind of pop it through. And then I will show you the next part here. Um, there are some plastic clips. Salvage those if you can. Okay, so I somehow managed to get all this crap off. What a pain. Definitely save these screws. Save your plastic clips. Also, there's this microscopic little piece in here. Take that out of the old one. Pop it in the new one. Not sure what purpose it serves other than holding it in place, but anyway, that's that. So yeah, you just pop this lock out. There's only two bolts holding it in. Alright, so this piece, this bracket that goes on the outside that holds the lock in place. There's this freaking screw here that you're going to want to take out. And uh, you're going to want to add this to this part here. Okay. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is uh, reinstall the handle, handle piece and the uh, lights. We're gonna do this on the car. That's the clip goes here. See that? This thing doesn't autofocus very quickly. One clip goes there. The other one goes here. So yeah, you just wanna start putting the um, things through. Uh, put your lights in place. Clip this big guy, the middle handle portion down. Make sure you put your screws in first. And, um, take care of the wires after you're done affixing the lights and such to the uh, garnish piece okay okay if you get the lights in put the screws on the uh, little trunk release handle here make sure you have the washers included on them and uh, then after that we're going to take care of the wires okay so the wires pretty much speak for themselves. They go here in this little crack. I can really jam it in there. There's another crease here for this guy. Okay. Now here comes the trickier part. Got this guy here. Okay. This hole here is for this little clip. I don't know if you can see that. See that clip? Yeah, that goes in that hole right there. Okay, it snaps in, and then uh, this wire here, and this wire here, they just sit there. Okay, no big deal. Push this back in, this grommet back in, this rubber grommet, okay, and then uh, line everything up. Once you got that on, you want to put the four bolts back in, including the other two for the lock. So, let's do that. After that's done, we're going to put the vapor barrier back together, and then we're going to pop this bad boy back on. And that's pretty much it. So, to put the vapor barrier back on, you just press it. No big deal. Make sure it's all sealed, though. These just... You pop them in here, no big deal. Uh, make sure all of your plastic clips are in place. Very important. And then you want to start from the top here. Okay, Get that one plugged in. The other one plugged in. Okay, and then uh, start from the top. Get it all lined up. that's in and then you can start uh, 
pop in your uh, things back in. It's all lined up. Now you just want to make sure everything works. Seems good. Alright, now the next fun part is uh, <laughs> taking the logo off the old one. Taking the logo off of here. Putting the new one on, that is going to be a total bitch and a half. So the next part we're going to need to get this logo off and what you're going to need is a heat gun and some fishing line. Uh, basically you want to take the heat gun and uh, kiss it with some hot air. Get it hot enough so that it's nice and warm but not hot enough that it melts the fishing line and it's kind of a delicate balance there. But anyway, once you do, you can get it on the inside and kind of uh, what you do once you get the fishing line on the side there is you can saw it, you, you can do it in like a, a sawing motion and uh, you just have to work at it and, and that will take it off for you. So here I'm demonstrating for you the uh, sawing motion of the fishing line. You just got to go back and forth. Um, you'll know you're doing well if it starts to get sticky and you can kind of feel the glue coming off on the uh, fishing line itself. You can sort of maybe barely see it in the video. But anyway, you do that for you know quite a while. It starts to go faster as more comes off. Doing it at the very beginning is uh, basically what, you know, getting it started takes the longest. Eventually, you should be able to get it off. See my glue? Yeah. All right, and that's what the uh, that's what it looks like. And then uh, you know, remove as much glue as you can. It's not a hundred percent imperative that you remove all the glue. Um, the press in place will apply a nice glue layer on top of the glue that's already there. Okay, so using press in place, 3M press in place stuff is awesome for putting on car decals. Anyway, there's these two stupid little things here that stick out. I wouldn't recommend removing them because it'll allow you to get the logo on nice and straight. But, that kind of gets in our way of doing this. But anyway, it's so big anyway, we're going to need two of these. So just bump it right up against the, uh, the spikes. And as you can see, we'll get just about full coverage here. Remove this thing here. perfectly aligned and then you're going to press press this here uh, every little surface that's that's uh, on the back of this just press it down real good so we're pretty good I mean we got just about full coverage here it doesn't need to be 100% I mean you saw how difficult it was just to get the thing off um, but anyway push it on the best you can okay so once you're ready Slowly, and I mean slowly, peel this away to make sure you can see that the um, the stuff sticks. The whole point of this is to make sure that the the stuff sticks to the thing. And if it doesn't, it usually does. See all that glue that's remaining on there? Okay. Anyway, so once you get that, line them up. Don't push down yet. Get them in the holes together. Okay, and then push really, really hard and hold it there. It's a pressure sensitive adhesive. So what you want to do is just push on that for about a good minute or so. Okay, there you have it, all done. We'll get the rest of this stuff on here in a minute and uh, do all these letters. Probably another day, because it's starting to get cold. I think we have a winter storm coming in. Anyway, so there you go. That's how you change the garnish on your 5th uh, generation 4Runner. Thanks for watching.